What if you're faster than you think? Let me tell you about a 61 year old potato farmer and what he has to do with you running faster. I'm Dr. Nate, welcome back to Speed Tribe where we help you deal with pain so you can run your fastest times and live your best life. So here's how the story goes down. On the 27th of April, 1983, a 61 year old potato farmer showed up at the beginning of a 544 mile race, 544 miles. He showed up in work boots and overalls and everybody thought he was there just as a spectator. But when the gun went off and the elite athletes all in their light tank tops and shorts just darted off, he did too, except he was shuffling. Like literally he shuffled because he's 61 years old and he's a farmer in work boots. He's old, so he shuffled slowly. What does this have to do with you running faster? Ah, keep with me, keep with me. Now throughout the day they run, it's 544 miles. And like the thing about an endurance race, it's not something you like watch nonstop. Like, you know, it's even sometimes watching a long cross country race can be a little dull. So like in the Super Bowl, like if you get bored and you go off to get a treat, you can miss an important play or an important commercial. But in an endurance race, you can go off, get a snack, go to the bathroom, watch all of Endgame and come back and still you won't have missed anything. So um, there's Cliff Young. That's his name, 61-year-old potato farmer, just shuffling. And when night came and when it was too dark to see, all the other competitors went to the side of the road and they slept for at least six hours so that they would have enough stamina to run for the other 18 hours in the day. But that's when something extraordinary happened. Um, Cliff just kept running. In fact, he ran all night. He ran right past all those competitors that were sleeping. They didn't even know it when they got up staggering and stiff from a bad night's sleep, sleeping on the ground to run for another 18 hours. They had no idea that Cliff Young had passed him in the night and was still running. Cliff Young kept running for five days, 15 hours and four minutes. When he approached the finish line, they were not even ready for him. The previous competitor, the previous fastest time at this distance in this race was two days later. Days, not hours, days. In fact, he finished 10 hours before some of the elite athletes came in. When, the, when they were shocked and asked him how he did it, he told them that he grew up one of seven kids during the Great Depression. And he grew up on a sheep farm and their farm covered 2,000 acres. And occasionally cyclones, um, like a, an Australian hurricane would blow in. And then he had to gather up all the sheep on foot. And they were too poor to afford a horse. And if they didn't get in all the sheep, then they wouldn't survive, right? So he told himself during this race that a cyclone was coming and that if he didn't get all the sheep in, his family wouldn't survive. And so this is the story he told him. In, in sports psychology, this is called detachment. It's finding a way to tell yourself a story that gets you away from the pain and runs faster. But like, this is not all there is. See, it's not that the other competitors weren't capable of running that fast. In fact, uh, now runners can run that same distance uh, and an additional 100 miles to that distance, like 650 miles, in a basically the same amount of time. What was different is they didn't understand their innate capacity. Now, we all do this. We all tell ourselves stories that aren't necessarily true that limit our potential. We say things like, I'm not a math person, or I'm fat, or I'm slow, or I'm, I'm just not good at finishing, I choke, I'm shy, I'm embarrassed, I crack, oh, it hurts too much and I can't do it. See, when I tell you that we tell ourselves stories, it's not a long story. They're just really statements we make about ourselves, but these statements aren't necessarily true. But these statements begin to form our identity and they rob us of potential and capacity, but they're not true. They're just automatically generated by our brain. Dr. Merzenk, the father of modern neuroplasticity, this, this is the study of how the brain makes connections. He studied the brain longer than I've been alive and he says, absolutely everyone can get better at virtually anything. So what if you're faster than you think you are? What if there's more in there? Watch the stories that your mind automatically generates and tell a better story. See what happens. See you next time.